like to read some very familiar verses from uh, the Word of God, uh, reading from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We know the Lord will bless the reading of his own precious word. Can we bow please for a moment? Our loving Father, we do thank you, Lord, that we can turn to your own precious word. We ask, loving Father, that you will help us. We read in your word of those two men who walked on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus himself drew near and went with them, and he opened to them the scripture. Oh, Father, we pray that you will open the scripture to us, that we might be see and behold the beauty of the Lord our God. So, Lord, minister to us. Help us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. And amen. Now, tonight, I want us to look at uh, this uh, psalm that we've read together. There are many names that are given to the Lord Jesus, and the one that we want to look at uh, tonight uh, from this psalm is the name Shepherd. Now, before we do that, I want to correct something, a mistake that I made on Sunday evening. Uh, you remember that we were looking at the humanity of the Lord Jesus and emphasizing the fact that uh, as a child, Jesus grew and increased in learning. And I quoted from that amazing prophecy of Zacharias in chapter one of Luke's gospel. And we have there the prophecy that there would have arisen one, uh, raise up a, a horn of salvation for us in the house of uh, his servant David, and that he would, uh, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, and that he, he would grant us uh, that uh, we being delivered out of the hand of our enemy might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. He talks about uh, the, 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 the give light uh, to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide their feet into the way of peace. And while uh, that prophecy uh, speaks about the salvation that, that Jesus would bring, uh, that he would be the one who would be uh, the, uh, able to deliver us from the hand of our enemy, and that we might be able to serve him without fear and righteousness all the days of our lives. I quoted the last verse, uh, and uh, I said that, that uh, Jesus uh, was a child, grew and waxed strong in spirit, uh, and was in the desert until the days of his showing. And well, you know that uh, while uh, the child there that is referred to is not Jesus, but John the Baptist. Uh, it doesn't take away from the point that uh, Jesus did, uh, does say in Luke chapter 2 uh, that whenever they had uh, performed all the things uh, according to the law, they returned to Galilee in the city uh, of Nazareth and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. But I made the mistake of uh, referring to chapter 1 as uh, uh, to the life of the Lord Jesus now today uh, we we want to to look at this much loved uh, psalm uh, and this passage of scripture that revealed to us the preciousness of the person and the ministry of the lord jesus the psalmist davis 
uh, speaking about his personal relationship with the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is a shepherd. Uh, he doesn't say the Lord is the shepherd. But he says the Lord is my shepherd. There are many who know the psalm, but yet they have no relationship with the shepherd of the psalm. They don't know the Lord. And they cannot rightly uh, take comfort from uh, the promises uh, that are revealed to us in this amazing psalm. Uh, so uh, while uh, there are those who tragically know the psalm, they don't know the shepherd. And they cannot say the Lord is my shepherd any more than a man uh, can find comfort in the fact that there's a million pounds in the bank if that money's not his. Uh, he can't uh, he can't take any comfort from the fact that there's money in the bank if that money is not his. And we can't take comfort uh, from this psalm if we don't know the Lord as our shepherd. Uh, we cannot, if we cannot say the Lord is my shepherd, and then the treasure of this psalm doesn't belong to us. Uh, unfortunately, at many funeral services, people who had no time for God and, and did not know the Lord and didn't even want to know anything about the Lord and yet they may request or the family may request uh, that the psalm is read or sung at, at a funeral service and it, it doesn't bring any comfort uh, if we don't know uh, the, the Lord as our shepherd uh, if I make a mistake and and, and uh, attributing a verse of scripture that it doesn't refer to, uh, to the life of the Lord Jesus well I can correct that but the person who draws comfort from a psalm that is uh, is not including them and, and they have no rightful claim upon all of the promises it's not just a mistake it's a tragedy uh, that there are those who when they face the valley of the shadow of death uh, the, the Lord will not be with them and they will not dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And whenever they have need, uh, he, uh, he will not be there to help. Uh, so it's vitally important that we can say, as David said, not only the Lord is our shepherd, or the, the Lord is the shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd. And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And like uh, uh, we... Uh, like any passage of scripture, if we're really to understand uh, what the psalmist is saying here, we need to ask the text questions. Who is the Lord? Uh, and what does it mean that he is called the shepherd? And how can he be my shepherd? Those are vitally important questions. And questions that uh, we just want to begin to, to look at for, uh, for a few moments uh, tonight uh, it says the Lord and uh, the name Jehovah uh, is uh, the God who makes covenant the God of grace who provides salvation for the sinner uh, the God who uh, is uh, we can have a personal relationship with uh, as, as Moses met uh, God in the burning bush in, in Exodus chapter 3 and God revealed himself as the I am that I am. And we find that whenever it refers to the Lord here, it's referring to Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God, the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God who gives and keeps promises. And we find in the Psalms, we read Psalm 80, and the psalmist says, Oh, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, and thou that dwellest between the cherubim, shine forth. And here is an amazing thing that we find in the scripture. The shepherd of Israel. Now, the psalmist could say, The Lord is my shepherd. Now, the shepherd of God's people. The shepherd of Israel. Now, he is the one who leads his people uh, like sheep. Uh, 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 he, he he leads them 
uh, like the flock uh, he protects them but he is the God who dwells uh, in glory uh, the one that dwells between the cherubims shine forth uh, we, we read in the, the Old Testament of the Shekinah glory where the presence of God came down between the cherubims and the Ark of the Covenant and the glory of God uh, filled the temple. Uh, we we, we recognise that the one who is the shepherd of Israel is the Lord of glory as Isaiah in chapter 57 and verse 15. And thus saith the high and the lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and the lofty place um, and with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the hearts of the contrite ones. And the one who is the shepherd is also the one who dwells in the high and the lofty place and yet he is willing to humble himself to come and dwell with the contrite and with the uh, those of a humble spirit. He is willing to take the place of a shepherd. We, we, we read uh, in the uh, story of the nativity uh, where the shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over the flocks by night and lo the angel of the Lord came upon them. And we recognize that the angel uh, came, the angels came to the shepherds. The shepherds were the lowest of the low. Uh, the shepherds were, were uh, 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 people who were the lowest class and yet here is the, the one who dwells in majesty and glory, the one who inhabited eternity, the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. Uh, he comes and he, he dwells among his people as a shepherd, the shepherd of Israel. Uh, we find in uh, when Jacob was praying for Joseph's two sons in, in Genesis chapter 48 and verse 5 and he says and he blessed Joseph and said God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk uh, the God which fed me all uh, my life long unto this day and the, the, the word that is referred to there uh, the God which fed me uh, literally means Elohim, uh, the, the one who shepherded me, the one who uh, cared for me, the one who was the shepherd. And uh, we find also in Isaiah where it says he, uh, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And so we find this picture of the shepherd in uh, the Psalms and in uh, the thinking of, of the old the patriarchs how the, the Lord shepherded them and guided them as a flock and uh, in the prophecies of Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel and so we find uh, the Lord the Lord is my shepherd the Lord the, the covenant keeping one the one who dwells between the cherubims the one who is in the high and the lofty one who who, who humbled himself and came uh, to be the shepherd of his people to lead them and to guide them and so we find that uh, the Lord of Psalm 23 is the good shepherd of, of John chapter 10 and you read there where Jesus identifies himself I am uh, the same name that was given to uh, uh, Moses uh, the burning bush I am and he says I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep uh, they, uh, we find that uh, uh, he is the good shepherd uh, we find also in the, in the New Testament where there were those who recognized there is none good but God only and we recognize that Jesus is re revealing the, himself to be the good shepherd and the only one who is good uh, and he is the shepherd uh, and we know that from that same passage of scripture the Jews who listened to the teachings of the Lord Jesus and uh, 
uh, how he identifies himself as the good shepherd that giveth his life for his sheep and the one who uh, says my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand and it tells us in verse 31 of the same chapter and the Jews took up stones to stone him and uh, they answered him said for for a good work we stone thee not for but blasphemy because thou being man makest thyself a uh, uh, god and uh, again they, they didn't understand who he was but he was the good shepherd uh, that giveth his life for the sheep and we, we know that you cannot have a shepherd if there's not sheep uh, and uh, the, the, the lord says i am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep and david could say the lord is my shepherd uh, douglas mcmillan uh, has pointed out that there are three ways that a shepherd can have sheep uh, uh, he can have them if if someone gives them to him uh, as a gift or if he goes to the market and he purchases and pays a price for them, he can buy sheep and they become his. And not just as those who have been gifted to him, but those who have been purchased by him. And the third way is by those who are born from him among his flock. And so we find that Jesus is the good shepherd. He says, all that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Uh, we recognize that he is the one who is, uh, is the shepherd of the sheep. He says, my sheep may hear my voice. And he says, Hi, uh, uh, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Uh, not only those that have been given to him, but uh, the scripture reminds us that they are the ones who were redeemed by him. For as much as you know that you're not redeemed and by, uh, with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Uh, he comes uh, as a lamb uh, and, and yet he uh, gives his life as the good shepherd for the sheep. He pays that price to purchase them from the slave market of sin, to redeem them from destruction and from uh, the, the judgment and wrath of God. He appeases the anger of God uh, and he uh, makes atonement for them by the sacrifice of himself. So we recognize that uh, he, he is the good shepherd uh, because of uh, his willingness to die uh, that we might live. And John goes on to say, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We can become uh, his sheep by the new birth, by being born into the family of God. And so we find the work of the divine uh, thriving God. Uh, God the Father gives. Uh, God the Son uh, suffers. And God the Holy Spirit draws. No man can come unto me except the Father draw him and except a man be born of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god and so jesus says i am the good shepherd uh, the good shepherd giveth his life uh, for the sheep we find that the psalm 23 is placed in the book of psalms uh, it comes after psalm 22 and whenever you read Psalm 22, it gives us this remarkable details a thousand years before the cross uh, of Calvary. And uh, the shepherd is giving his life for the sheep, uh, the good shepherd. Before he could become the good shepherd, uh, we, we, we see the picture there of Psalm uh, 22. He says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, amazingly written uh, uh, before uh, a thousand years before Jesus hung upon the cross and there on the cross he cried my God my God why hast thou forsaken me 
And he says, hey, I am a worm and a no man, a reproach of men and the spies of the people. All this, they that see me laugh me to scorn and they shoot out the lip and shake the head saying he trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Basham have beset me around. They keep upon me with their mouths and uh, as a, a, a raveling and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. Uh, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like the potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. Uh, and thou hast brought me to the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, and pe they pierced my hands and my feet. They tell all my bones. They look, uh, um, and it says, they have parted my garments among them and cast lots for my vesture. Uh, we have the details of the cross. Uh, the, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And the good shepherd of uh, Psalm uh, 23 is the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the, the, the one who came down from the, the splendors of glory uh, into this world of woe, the one who took his place, uh, uh, took our place and died upon the cross and his hands and his feet were, were, were marred for our, our sinning. Uh, well, we find that, that the scripture revealed the Lord as the good shepherd. Uh, but we also find in uh, Hebrews, uh, he is the great shepherd, uh, the great shepherd. Uh, those amazing verses at the end of the book of Hebrews uh, in chapter 13 and verse 20 and 21. And now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of his of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen there, there's there's a, a wealth of truth in that benediction in hebrews and we find there that he is not only the one who gave his life for us uh, the good shepherd but he is the great shepherd the one who uh, was brought again from the dead who triumphed over death uh, we, we have those words of Paul in 2nd Timothy in chapter 1 and verse 10 uh, but now is made manifest by the appearing of Jesus Christ uh, our Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life uh, through the gospel so we have uh, the Lord is my shepherd, the one who gave his life. He is the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. He is the great shepherd that triumphed over all of his enemies. Where we can say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be unto God that giveth us to the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has abolished death and brought life and until uh, and uh, immortality to light through the gospel so you have psalm 22 and uh, there you see calvary and you see the suffering savior you see the cross and then you have psalm 23 the the shepherd the one who uh, the psalmist could say the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and all that flows from that uh, relationship that he has with the shepherd and then we find that uh, the Psalm 23 is followed by Psalm 24. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? Uh, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who was holy, undefiled, separate from sinners. The one who did no sin, the one who knew no sin, the one who was uh, holy. And he was able to ascend into the hill of the Lord. And he was able to receive the blessing from the God, uh, the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Righteousness that, that can be imputed to us uh, or imparted to us. Uh, the, the robe of his righteousness uh, he bids me to wear. 
uh, the, the provision of the shepherd uh, for the sheep. And we have that beautiful passage that tells us uh, to lift up our eye, he uh, heads, O ye gates, to be lifted up your everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And I lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up your everlasting doors, and uh, the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He comes first of all. Uh, as uh, the, the Lord strong and mighty, mighty in battle, he comes to face the foe. He comes to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He gives his life a ransom for many. He dies the just for the unjust. He comes to save sinners. But then he comes a second time in majesty and power and in glory. And he comes uh, not only as the good shepherd that gives his life and the great shepherd who conquers his enemies, but uh, Peter talks about the chief shepherd uh, in First Peter in chapter 5 and verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And so we find uh, the beauty of who he is, uh, the Lord, the Lord, uh, the one who gave his life for us, the one who conquered death, the one who is coming again to reward and, and to give uh, those who have trusted him and followed him, heard his voice and follow him. He gives unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And he shall give them, and they shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. He is the one who gives his life in, in Calvary. He, he's the one who, as Paul says in, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, much more being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from uh, wrath through him for if we, when, enemy, when we were enemies we we're reconciled by the death of his son much more being reconciled we'll be saved by his life it's not just the fact that he gave his life for us but he gives his life to us it is in his life that we live uh, that we overcome and we are saved by his life that life that is imparted to us and not only so, we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. And so we find uh, here in this psalm, uh, this uh, revelation, uh, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm reminded of the hymn uh, that we sometimes sing, There is a Redeemer. And Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Uh, and Jesus, my Redeemer, a name above all names, precious Lamb of God. Uh, uh, and he says, when I stand in glory, I shall see his face. And uh, what, what a day that will be. Uh, we recognize the psalmist could say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is the one who meets our every need. He is the one who satisfies the longing of every soul. Uh, he's the one who feeds us in the finest of the wheat. He is the one who uh, gives to us so much. And I trust that as we look at this psalm, uh, we'll see something of the wonder, not only of who he is, but how we can become his. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, him. Uh, they follow me. And so uh, we can learn from this psalm. And I trust that the Lord will make it a blessing to us. And can we bow please again for a moment in prayer. Lord, we're reminded of the word shepherd of love. Lord, we thank you, dear Father, that you knew our need. We thank you, Lord, that, Father, you came into this world to save sinners. We thank you, dear Father, for those who have heard your voice, who have recognized they're, they're a lost soul and they need a saviour, and they have trusted you and you have become their saviour. You have become a shepherd uh, to them. You have been the one who has led them and provided for them and the one who will be with them 
and go through the valley uh, with them and give them victory. Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we pray, dear Father, that as we seek to meditate upon it, that you will bring it with freshness to our hearts, the wonder of who he is. Uh, Jesus, uh, my Saviour, uh, Lord, we thank you for who he is. And Lord, for those who know him not, they may know the psalm, but they don't know the shepherd. Lord, we pray, dear Father, that they will seek you. Uh, your word reminds us, call upon me, and I will answer thee. And Lord, we pray, dear Father, that they might come to know you as their saviour, as their friend, and as their shepherd. So loving Father, set your seal upon your word, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you again for listening, and uh, God willing, we will look again at this amazing psalm uh, next time.